previously on Dual Destinies. Anyone with a prior conviction, no matter how minor the offense, they won't... They won't be allowed to graduate from this stupid, holier-than-thou school. You went through with a mock trial, even though you had just discovered a body. You didn't, like, tell somebody about it. You really wanted to win that bad. Bad enough to ignore a dead body. I was the cool form of uncool before uncool became a thing. Every day I love you less and less. Oh, hello. Looks like we can finally go here. Okay, so where were we? I thought the area was cordoned off. Hey, the police are discussing something over there. Oh, I know. I'll just quietly sneak over for a listen. Here it goes. Ah, Athena, watch where you're... Uh-oh. Huh? Oh, jeez. Did you trip over a case on the ground? Ow! Who put this stupid box here? Wait. Uh-oh, what's going on? It's like something in it? Something dangerous? Oh my god, really? <laughs> Wait a minute, it's her! You morons just blew my cover! Uh, <laughs> there really is someone inside. Holy crap, um... That someone is me, Miriam Scuttlebutt. What?! And I'm a senior in the judge course. Do they all have to wear the same outfit? Because that was definitely her outfit. Those sleeve things with the buttons. That's too unusual. Whoa! Oh, man. <laughs> Twirling the pen. I like it. Um, it's the fate of we who live in the shadows. There's a very good reason why none may see my face by the light of day. Should give her the snake voice. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's a snake and she's in a box! I never- I didn't even realize it till just now. Jeez. Wait, if you're taking the judge course, did you write a mock trial script too? So you really want to see my script that bad? Wait, that's just like the other guy. Well, you better watch out. Read it without my permission and you'll wish you hadn't. Who cares? I'm sure it was rejected for a good reason. Like, because it sucks! <laughs> Miriam Scuttlebutt, jeez Louise. Those are studying to be a judge, too. You must be classmates with Juniper. Are you a friend of hers? Juniper? <laughs> sure, she's my friend. That's why I'm gathering info. Now tell me all you know. You know, for tomorrow's trial. For tomorrow's trial? What are you talking about? I'm going to take the stand, naturally. So are you going to take the witness stand in that box? So the witness for the prosecution is some weirdo in a cardboard box. Cack, cack. This disguise is how I get my scoops. But you're right, it's me. So tell me everything you know for... Oh my no. It's not old bag, is it? Ugh. Repeat what you just said. Hmm. Oh boy. Well, the box is sweating. I thought so. Athena, my bracelet's reacting. This is so weird, I don't even know what to say. Really? That means a lie already? That was quick. <laughs> well, sooner the better. Let's do it. Um, what are we looking for here? I'm taking the stand. It's gotta be like on that one of her hands. I'm just gonna watch this hand for a minute. Tell me everything you know. It's probably the Ford Juniper's sake is gonna be the lie. There it is, there it is, there it is, boom! Yes, confirm. Oh, I got lucky there. <laughs> That's strange. You suddenly tightened your grip when you said, Ford Juniper's sake. It's like you subconsciously tensed up because you're lying! God, what are you talking about? Where did I ever lie? Okay then, let me ask you this. Why were you selected as a witness? That's an easy one. 
I mean, it can't be her because she got arrested, right? So, so why why did I even say that? I have no idea. That's an easy one. I'm the editor in chief of the Themis Herald. I know everything there is to know around campus, even the darkest of secrets. Editor in chief, pretty impressive. So you wrote that article then, or maybe you edited that article. Uh, Hmm. Wow, okay. And here's the proof. Ah! Wow. An X-ray edition of the Themis Herald published to coincide with the mock trial. Themis Herald Extra added to the court record. Oh. Thanks, Miriam. You revealed you've revealed who you truly are. As someone who's never had Junie's best interests in mind. What? Are you questioning our friendship? Look, you may want answers, but... No can do, is what you're saying conflicts with this piece of evidence. E -e -e. Well, what did she just give us? Can I look at that? An extra edition of the school paper that covers the mock trial. An unceremonious cancellation. Ooh, objection. Blah, blah. My first thought, I'm, I'm not sure I entirely understand the question here, but, but my first thought was to present the paper, because, like, supposedly if you're really friends with her, why would you be writing this crap about her? That's the same thing on the paper I published. What about it? Are you really that dense? <laughs> this article is full of malicious lies about Junie. It's definitely not something a true friend of hers would write. Well, there you go. Once again, overthinking. Kako! You got it all wrong! Another staff member wrote that one. I don't think so, Miriam. You even said it yourself just a moment ago. You said you did everything. Yep. If you just give me the info you have. Stupid pawn! Cooper is just using you! <laughs> uh, no, you're not. No, no, we're not. No, she's not, I mean. Well, either way, at least we got her wrecked. <laughs> this is like. I don't know how much weirder the so-called costumes in this game can get. This is crazy. Now, I want the truth, Miriam. You hiding your box in order to collect gossip for your sleazy paper, isn't that right? You're not really friends with Juniper, are you? No duh, she's a target of my scoops and my reuse demand dirt. Extra, extra, the dirty little secret of the squeaky clean student council president. Dirty little secret? Alright, what are you planning to say in court, huh? I'm a witness to her part in the crime. I'm going to tell it all in a shocking expose. The end justifies the means. That's my brand of all tell all journalism. The end justifies the means. Now, where have we heard that before? Yeah, I know. In this dark age of law, many of us embrace Professor Means' methods, even future judges. I've even adopted an end justifies the means brand of journalism, which includes. Tape recorders secretly hidden all over our campus. Secretly recording every last word without anyone being any the wiser. Doesn't you realize that's totally illegal? <laughs> and one of them was at the scene of the crime. The art room. Was it? <laughs> you put a tape recorder in the art room? What did it record? Well, two people were making out in there, so we had to fast forward past that part. That was boring. But you know, you really want to know? Yes, please! It's so nice of you to... <laughs> Yeah, uh, hmm. We just fell right into that one, sorry. I had to stop reading because I didn't want to fall into that one. It's like I would just want to fall in the trap. Hmm. According to my evidence, a total fissure, a fatal fissure, had opened between the three of them. Who, Junie, Hugh, and Robin? What do you mean by fatal fissure? Fatal fissure, uh, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but he fissure. Juniper, Hugh, and Robin used to be the best of friends. Used to be? They still seem to get along fine to me. I did send some Discord, though. Yeah. You don't know anything. Professor Means has his followers and Professor Court had hers. Their influence is inescapable. Are you implying that one of them adheres to that extreme idea you and Professor Means have? But why would anyone follow that philosophy? <laughs> How could you possibly understand? You're new around here. I mean, well... Miriam, wouldn't you feel better if you came out of the dark and into the light? I can see fine in here. 
You'll be the one who's seen the light in court tomorrow. Then you'll realize how guilty Juniper Woods really is. Jeez. Ugh, we're gonna have to cross-examine her tomorrow. But I don't know where to start. Well, let's at least take care of whatever we can today. You're right. Let's see what else we can find out. Hmm. Well, I think I talked to everyone who is somehow linked to the case. Or wait, no, no. Well, I think I talked to everyone who is somehow linked to the case. Okay, maybe it's about time we wrapped up our investigation, then. Really? Oh, wait, we haven't met with Jimmy yet. Yeah, you're right. Let's head over to the detention center. Let's do it. So what is there left, you know? Should I present my badge before I leave? Present it to everybody else. Ha! Ah, if you want to give me a present, slip it through a hole in my box. What? Is that a euphemism? Or if it's too big, you can open the top and give me it that way. Wow, dude. So which way is it going to be? Either way, it creeps me out. Yeah. Hi. Fina, thank you so much for coming. She called me Fina, like she used to. Maybe she's finally letting her guard down. Alright, what's going on here? Jumi, the crime's unfolding exactly like your script. Any idea what's going on here? We wanted to make it fair, so the script was kept secret until the day of the mock trial. And the only people who knew the details were Professor Court and I. Nothing we haven't heard already so far. Okay, so that whole Biakia thing I was talking about earlier, no. Just no. Because he didn't know about the script, so... that She said she just said only she and the Professor knew about it. So whatever. Oh. Well, there was this one article in the school paper. Oh boy, here it comes already. <laughs> you mean this one? It's more like a tabloid piece than a newspaper article, if you ask me. I've been worried that the trial would wreck the friendship between Robin, Hugh, and me. She wants to say friends, but both the guys are hoping to make it to take it to the next level. Oh. The passion of high school drama. Wish I could have experienced it. <laughs> Wait, did you... Wait a second, why, why would you say that? Was she, like, homeschooled? Did I just happen to stumble upon a really big clue there just now? Uh, <laughs> never mind. And I know I shouldn't have, but... I revised the script to favor the prosecution. But Professor Court noticed it immediately and changed it back. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. But she must have changed it because she didn't want that ass hat to win. That would have kept the trio's relationship the same. Never knew Judy could be so devious. <laughs> Sorry, I guess my personal problems probably won't be of any help in court, huh? So I should have given her Sasha's voice, this kind of, you know... You never know. Help often comes in the most unexpected places. Thanks, Juniper. Well, uh, and there was the all. Let's give it our all here. See, I was wondering about that all you had on you when you were arrested. Detective Fulbright, we found this in the suspect's pocket. The suspect's pocket. <laughs> oh, why, there's, there's blood on this. Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Well, I didn't know what a mock trial was either until pretty recently, but... Huh. It was the murder weapon from the mock trial. Professor Court and I were prepping it in the art room until the day before the trial. I didn't even realize I still had it on me until I was arrested. Then we've nothing to worry about. There shouldn't be any way to link it to the crime. I mean, if they test the blood, why well, they're gonna get ketchup? Still, that blood red color on the all bothers me. Wasn't it just paint or something? I mean, I was looking at it from pretty far away, but... It probably was just paint. But that's what bothers me. It wasn't on the all when we were prepping it yesterday. It wasn't. Then how and when did it get there? Well, before the mock trial began, I showed Fino and Mr. Wright to the waiting room. Then I went back to my dressing room to get the trial props we were going to use. That's when I found the art room key, and the awl with what looked like blood on it. The key, and the awl. Ugh. Professor Court normally has the art room key since she's the fine arts club's advisor. 
And since that key was there in the dressing room, I thought she was the one who had painted the owls to look like it had blood on it. After all, she always insisted that the props should be realistic, so... Uh, so whoever killed her must have taken the key and left it there? Ooh. But they also used the awl, so that was actually real blood on it when she found it. Ugh. Yeah, oh boy. Mock trial prep work. Oh man. You and Professor Court, uh, you and Professor were, you and Professor Court were busy preparing for the mock trial together yesterday, right? Was that the last time you saw her? Yes, I left school at around 6 p.m. Did you notice anything different about her? No, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. She looked and acted the same as always. I would have never guessed she'd end up like this. Looks like we're about out of time. Thank you for coming to see me. We'll do everything we can to prove you innocent tomorrow. I know. And I believe in you, Athena. Well, I'll have to go now. Bye. <laughs> see ya. Is she gonna be alright? She's like a shadow of the girl we met back at the academy. The duty I knew was always like that, a little weak and sickly. But the fact that she's lifted her facade shows that she trusts us. Even still... What is it? Well, when Judy and her two friends were talking about their friendship, I sensed some discord in their hearts. Seriously? Yeah, but it was really faint. I might have been mistaken. No, it's... oh man. There's no reason to doubt their friendship, is there? I don't... I, I just can't imagine how she would have been friends with two people like that in the first place. I. It's like they're pretending or something. Don't worry, everything will be fine. You and Juniper are friends, right? You know that friend I mentioned to you earlier? Well, get this. Whenever something is troubling one of us, the other can just feel it. That's real friendship. I suppose you're right. Might as well forget about that and concentrate on the trial. Yep, tomorrow's the big day. Let's sort out what we know so far. Okay. The victim, Professor Constance Court, was murdered in the art room on the third floor. Then her body was moved to the outdoor stage in the quad. Also, the location where we found the body was just as the mock trial script described. I wish those were the only similarities they shared. What do you mean? What I mean is the script in this case are exactly the same in almost every respect. So it follows that the actual trial may very well unfold just like the mock trial did. Oh no! The mock trial ended right before the prosecution was about to win. Ew. That's not gonna happen. This time Judy will be declared not guilty. Of course, I intend to get our results the honest way. We can do this. We'll be fine. After all, I have Apollo and he's the king of being fine. <laughs> that he is. And with that, investigation is done for day one. Oh man. God, I love her pointing pose, what it is. Of course, when you look at it as a silhouette, it looks pretty cartoony, but... But yeah, save game, definitely. October 25th, 9.47 a.m., time for the trial, y'all. We were on Phoenix Wright Jewel Destinies, Case 3. And, um... We're at Themis Legal Academy. And... Oh, my butterflies have butterflies in their stomach. <laughs> so what's it like to wear normal clothes in a courtroom? Let's find out. So what's it like to have your very own case for the first time? My heart hasn't raced this fast since I ran that whole marathon last year. Holy shit. If it keeps up, you might get a lawyer's high. You know, like a runner's high. How about a speedrunner's high? Relax. Everyone's nervous their first time. Yeah, but it's my first time. Oh god, what are you doing here? So my fears weren't unfounded. After all, today's prosecutor is so terribly brutal. And willing to use any means necessary to win a conviction. There's that end justifies the means concept again. Now that it has come to this... Look up. We have no choice but to fight fire with fire. The end justifies the means. I wish he'd stop saying that. <laughs> I was just thinking that, jeez. You know, and normally I kind of agree with that statement, but... Because if... I don't know, like... 
But there are times when, I don't know, it's questionable. That's your method, Professor. I'm gonna defend Juniper in my own way. But Miss Sykes, I'm the one who did it. I don't want you to find out, you know. Just yesterday you told me. As a lawyer, what is it that you treasure beyond all else? Heh, <laughs> that's an easy one, Professor. Seeking justice for my clients. But if this trial proceeds in the same manner and ends in the same way as the mock trial, would you not lose everything you've worked so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure that it doesn't happen then, won't I? Hmm. My, but aren't you a stubborn one? Well, I suppose you will have to learn of your own effic effic inefficacy the hard way. <laughs> Wow. Maybe he's just a hard-ass teacher, I don't know, but man, I tell ya. So forgive me, Professor Means, but can we just leave it at that? I know, I'll stop this now before it gets any worse. Oh, for, please forgive me, it's just I wish to protect you to provide any means I can. You do not. Uh, maybe I'm being too hard on this guy, I don't know. I don't want to be too quick to jump to anything here. But if you would excuse me. Because it could end up being that he's kind of a, like an extremist in some way, but that he'll just turn out to be right one time and then, you know, whatever, and then expect people to like to think that like they should learn their lesson from him being right that one time because things just happened to pan out the right way for his ends justifies the means mentality to work that one time. You know what? Never mind. Oh, thanks to him, I'm feeling even more pressure than before. Don't let it get to you, Athena. And don't forget to keep smiling. I'll be fine, and I haven't forgotten what Mr. Wright said. The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. The trial's about to begin. I'll show you to the courtroom if you please, dudes. Let's go. No. Apollo, I'm counting on you to support Athena this time. I'm just gonna sit in the audience on my ass and play some Sudoku while you uh do your thing. Mm-hmm. Junie's fate rests in my hands. I won't rest until she walks free. Okay, well, then let's do it. <laughs> then light the match, Paul. Man. Wow, 10 o'clock a.m., right on the dot. Quite punctual, aren't we? Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk the courtroom case. Open the door, get on the floor, everybody take a big back brace. Court is now in session for the trial of Juniper Woods. Oh my god, 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 man, look at me. Freaking, freaking hell, man. Athena Sykes, defense team leader, is ready, your honor. That didn't sound very confident. Sure you're okay? You don't look very confident. Sure you don't want to take off your backpack for this? Because I'll be fine. Your baldness. Oh, hi there, by the way. I know, I know, as usual, you want me to deliver the opening statement. Well, then get on with it already. This case is crystal clear. I see no need to explicate it any further. Now, summon the witness. Hmm. <laughs> what did you say? I said. Is there something the matter? Please do share your baldness. Whatever gave you that idea? Bailiff, please call our first witness. And now we don't even get an opening statement. <laughs> well, hello there, gumshoe. Detective Fulbright, he and Prosecutor Blackwell have become quite the team. Quite the team, alright. <laughs> the duo. Alright, the case brief. Leave it to me. Yes, let the detective in charge. Everyone's favorite friend of justice explain. What was that just now? It's like he and Blackwell are totally in sync. Well, I don't think they're capable of mind melding, if that's what you're thinking. Duh! Pretty sure that was a reference to something. Alright, Detective Fulbright, would you please explain the case to the court? Professor Court's body was discovered on October 24th at approximately 2.30 p.m. She was murdered with this all I have here. The victim's blood and the defendant's prints were both discovered on it. Well, yeah, of course her prints are on it. She found it in the art room. But, apparently somebody... Oh, God, now he's going after her. Jeez, lewd. Lewd? I, I don't know why I said lewd. Yeah. 
Did he just, like, send the bird over with the autopsy report? <laughs> I think that's what happened there. Oh my god, wow, that's totally what he did. Maybe Blackwell could train it not to mess up people's hair while he's at it. <laughs> Moving right along, the body was discovered on the outdoor stage, although no blood was found there. However, we detected traces of a massive amount of blood in the third floor art room. In short, the murder took place in the art room. So then the body had been moved from the art room to the stage. Uh, is there like more to the- well, no, there's not more to the script. They have to make it up after that point. Hmm. So then the body had been moved from the art room to the stage. Precisely. And there is one more piece of irrefutable evidence. A recording made by a tape recorder that a school paper reporter hid in the art room. It captured a female voice screaming, YOU'RE A GONER! Ew. What's this? You have such a recording? You're a goner? Must be from that tape recording Miriam mentioned. Why is this the first we heard of a death threat at the moment of the murder? Shh, silence, please. I would like to play the tape for you now. Your Honor, with your permission, I'd like to play the following tape recording. Okay. It doesn't seem like she was responding to anything, or... It is quite hard to hear. I can't help but feel like she's probably saying something else that just sounds like you're a goner. Like, gonorrhea or something. <laughs> but the voice does sound female. Tape recorder added to the court record. Well... The noise and low volume of the voice have made voice print analysis all but impossible. Then you haven't identified the voice as belonging to the defendant. Not so fast. After all, voice print analysis isn't everything. Mwah. The victim was killed at night, then discovered in the afternoon the next day. The question is, when was the body moved? Oh, uh oh. Oh, I know. It could have been moved in the middle of the night when no one was around. Sorry, but no. The campus was full of students that morning, however, no one reported seeing a body. That means the body was moved sometime before the mock trial, when all the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall, and the rest of the campus was empty. It was during this time, Hugh O'Connor, one of the mock trial participants, found the body. So the prosecution heard about Hugh seeing the body. Hmm. Wait one moment. If all the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall, then there wouldn't have been anyone who could have moved the body. Ha ha ha! Have no fear, for there is always an exception. An exception. The three mock trial participants were standing by in individual dressing rooms. They were the only ones who had free access to the deserted campus before the mock trial. What? Then that would mean... What would that mean? <laughs> Those three students were the only ones who could have moved the body. Injustice we trust! <laughs> Way to just throw that in there. I don't like where this is headed, Athena. Me neither. And by those three, I mean... Hugo Connor, Robin Newman, and Juniper Woods. I knew it. Please, Detective Fulbright. Don't say what I think you're about to say. Injustice we trust! Damn it. I take it everyone understands now. The voice believed to be that of the murderer was female. And out of the three people who could have moved the body, just one is a girl. Damn, he just won that case right there. Shit. Okay, well, there's still... No, 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 I mean, there's still, like, time. Mm. Wow. Huh. A splendid job, Fulbright. That could not be any clearer. Feel free to anticipate his salary raise next month. Whoa! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! I don't do this for the money. It's all about justice. Injustice we trust. How many times are you going to do that? <laughs> Not only a half-wit, but a perennial stick in the mud you are. I guess neither the carrot nor the stick works on Detective Fulbright. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bailiff, please bring our next witness to the stand. <laughs> no problem, Algie. I'll be doing that. Oh, no, no, man. 
Oh, man. Oh, damn it. So, our first witness is a cardboard box. That's right. <laughs> oh, good lord. There you are. Stealth mode deactivated. Oh my, the box has hands. Smile, your honor. Well, what the dickens? Oh my god, that's where what the dick comes from. Oh, I was always wondering that. Uh, I just had my picture taken. Miriam Scuttlebutt, senior at the Legal Academy. I'm a reporter on the judge course. My voice changes every time you turn around. Juniper's been a bad, bad girl. I'll tell you all about her crime. Hmm. Might I ask whether you could come out of that box? How will I get any more scoops if I blow my cover? So the answer is no. After all, covert action is an undercover reporter's bread and butter. Hmm. But testimony from a faceless witness is highly irregular. <laughs> Shut up, Your Honor, and let's do this. A formal ninja I met in the clink said that exposing those who walk in the shadows is to pass the death sentence upon them. Oh. I don't suppose you're talking about, uh, Sir Han Dogen, are you? Because <laughs> I heard somewhere that, like, a lot of the prisoners that he refers to are people that you've put away, or people that got put away in past cases. So that's kind of cool. Very well, if it would spare a life, I'll make a special exception this time. A former ninja in prison. Holy Shinto! How can the judge believe this load of crock? Well... <laughs> Now your testimony, please. Oh, but take care not to reveal your face. 